My name is Henry Pinchbeck. I'm the CEO of 3D Life Prints. We're currently sitting in the Innovation Lab in Older Hay Hospital uh, in Liverpool. Uh, I would describe what medical 3D printing is, is 3D printing that starts at its origin with patient data. The Innovation Hub brings people together. It brings together small companies, big companies, clinicians and uh, scientists, and they innovate together. They produce new and exciting ways of delivering healthcare. So I founded 3D Life Prints along with Paul Fotheringham and Mike Richards back in 2013, which time it was a humanitarian venture. We made prosthetic limbs out in East Africa. And when we came to the NHS, we brought the same skills that we had in East Africa over here. So that meant we worked with basic technologies, but produced some very high tech results. What we do at Older Hay is to do with innovation. It's to do with providing solutions to, these, uh, to the surgeon's problems. That could be anything from as simple as an anatomical model for them to plan their surgery, to something as complicated as a face mask for a burns victim. The benefits of being embedded are, are many and varied. Um, well, the primary one is to do with the connection between the clinicians and their technology. If you, put, if you put those two things together, all sorts of things can happen. Some surgeons are certainly more open to 3D printing than others. There's a gentleman at Older Hay called Ian Hennessy, uh, who is one of the most progressive paediatric surgeons that I've certainly ever met and has a really clear vision about the future of healthcare. Ian's a really big advocate of 3D printing. 3D printing benefits surgeons in many different ways. Uh, first of all, it provides a way for them to uh, physically see the underlying anatomy. So they can plan a surgery much more accurately if they've got an embodiment of the patient's features. So that could be an anatomical model, or it could easily be a, uh, a device that's been 3D printed specifically for that surgery. The work we've done has evolved dramatically over the years. Um, some of the cardiac models we've been making are now uh, for device sizing, for example. So rather than just giving a model of something that's a copy of the underlying anatomy, we now provide things that are more, more like tools for the surgeon rather than, than just copies. Children are certainly tricky when it comes to 3D printing. Their, uh, their anatomy is smaller, um, the detail level is greater, and also in terms of the scanning, you can't use as heavy uh, radiation dosage. So that means we tend to work with worse data, but the, the surgeons demand better results. So we use all different sorts of technology. Uh, we use FDM technology, SLS technology, SLA technology, and Polyject technology. One of our most recent additions is a uh, Stratasys Object Prime, uh, which has allowed us to print in a variety of different materials and has really increased our scope uh, of the type of models and the type of devices we can make for the surgeons here. Well, I see what we do here in, uh, in Liverpool as uh, a template for what we can do around the country. We've already opened up in Oxford. We have other uh, embedded hubs in Liverpool Heart and Chest Hospital, in the Liverpool Royal Hospital. And I, say, see, see, I see this as something that really can be used nationally as a way of bringing 3D printing from the academic sphere and putting it into the commercial sphere.